Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, man, Ms. Bobby, guys, you really thought I forgot about you. Of course not. Today we're going to continue with the Prophet series. The title today is Ibrahim salam, in Palestine and Mecca. The story of Ismail salam, and Ishak. Salam. My inbox has been flooded, my comment section has been flooded every single day. You guys write me and tell me, please continue with the Prophet series. Guys, to my own defense here, this video is over 40 minutes long and this is why I've been postponing it. Usually I react to 10 minute videos, 15 minute videos, 20 minutes is already pushing it guys and this video as I said is over 40 minutes long so this will take me multiple hours. So therefore we will have to split this video even into further parts. Guys, Guys, I know that you want to watch the Prophet series. However, if you truly want me to continue, please support the channel. Like the videos, subscribe to the channel, share the videos and support further via the links in the description box below. And now with no further ado, let's have a look. When Ibrahim realized that the Egypt is not the place to stay in, he migrated from Egypt to Palestine. Ah, right. And Allah when he leaves Egypt. opened the doors of blessings to Ibrahim Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la amma ba'd. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open to him his gates of wealth. They had lots of barakah and blessings in their business. He had so much sheep and he had so much in terms of wealth and he became quite a wealthy person. But there was one thing missing in Ibrahim's life. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is married to our mother Zara. One year of marriage passes she can't give him children. and there is no child. And the Khalil of Allah turns to Allah and begs Allah, Rabbi habli min as salihin This story, by the way, is identical in Christianity or in Judaism. Oh Allah, I beg you, give me a pious son. Two years of marriage pass and there is no child. And Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam makes this dua. Oh Allah, give me a pious son. Give me a righteous son. Five years of marriage passed and there is still no child and Ibrahim is still making dua. Rabbi habli min as Ten years of marriage passed and there is still no child and Ibrahim is still making the dua. Rabbi habli min as How old is Ibrahim at this point? I believe he's already in his 90s. Ten years of marriage passed. Twenty years of marriage passed. Wow. Twenty-five years of marriage passed. Thirty years of marriage passed. The years are passing by. There is no child. Allah is not responding. Allah is not answering the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim. But Ibrahim alayhi salam keeps on bowing. Ibrahim alayhi salam keeps on crying. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam keeps on asking. He keeps on making dua. Rabbi habli min as salihin. As every day passes, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam is becoming older. As every day passes, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam is becoming weaker. Slowly but surely, the color of his hair are changing. Our mother Azat Sara Sara has now got to an age in which women normally do not give birth. But look at the level of Iman of the Khalil of Allah. When it came to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, there was no such thing as despairing. Why should Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam despair? Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam knew one that loses hope in the mercy of Allah. This individual is a loser in the dunya and this individual right. is a loser in the akhirah. Why should he lose hope in the mercy of Allah? Ibrahim. This is what I truly love about Islam. The emphasis on Ibrahim, on Abraham. No no other religion puts the emphasis on Abraham like Islam does because Islam identifies who Ibrahim truly was, the first real monotheist that we know about, the father of all the prophets. Making dua to the Allah that is the Lord of the heavens and the earth, the Allah that is the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi, the Allah that is the Lord of the entire universe, the Allah that is the Al Qadir, that has the power to do as He pleases, whenever He pleases. He was making dua to the Allah that can make the impossible possible. When He's at the age of 80, Allah reveals a whole set of laws, a whole Sharia. Oh, and notice. Ibrahim is told in this set of laws, he is given the Abrahamic covenant that all true followers of Abraham are told to fulfill. He is told to circumcise. Right. He's the only believer. There is no other believer that can circumcise him. And so at the age of 80, our Prophet Muhammad tells us, 
as an 80 year old man when the laws come down he circumcises himself so Sarah, that pain man so and felt ibrahim is loving to have a child and he's 85 years old and the unfortunate thing is ibrahim didn't have a child because sarah was barren she doesn't give birth yeah so sarah that is the harsh reality that feminists do not want to accept. A man can produce a child even on his deathbed. A woman, on the other hand, once hitting menopause, it is all over. And even before that, it becomes very, very complicated in her 30s. This is the reality of biology, and we learn it through Islam. In Islam, we don't have this arbitrary age for marriage. No, when you hit puberty, you become fertile, and from now on, you can get married. This is sensical, this is logical. This is based in reality. Think back to Ibrahim. So she gave his slave, Hazar, a present to Ibrahim. He's Hazar, or Ibrahim, take her. She is yours now. Get married to her. Have children from her. May Allah bless you and her and us. <laughs> And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala With all due respect, it all happened the way that it had to happen However, for us men, we have to realize that we cannot wait for our wife to tell us 30, 35 years later that now it is okay to take a second wife We as men have to make the decision right away Once we see that our wife is not fertile That to happen and Ibrahim alayhi salam took accepted Hazar And then married her Then one day my young friend at the age of 86, wow. the dua of Ibrahim was accepted. At the age of 86, the dua of Ibrahim was accepted. And who was Ibrahim? The Khalil of Allah. The Khalil of Allah, the near and dear friend of Allah. Allah befriended him. And his dua has been accepted at the age of 86. The child is now born. And the name of this child is Ismail. My young friends, Ismail alayhi salam has come into the world. Sarah, now when she saw Ibrahim spending a lot of time with Ismail, and he's the mother of Ismail Hajar, and the attention now is taken away from Sarah to Ismail and Hajar, jealousy starts to play. And Women. Sarah will get so jealous that she could not even stand Hajar or the son of Hajar Ismail. And then the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to Ibrahim. Allah azza wa jal ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam to take Hazar and his new baby born Ismail in the middle of a valley by the name of Mecca where there's nothing there and leave him alone and come back to Sarah. Now Mecca, my young friends, wasn't like what Mecca is today. Mecca was a barren desert. There was nothing in Mecca. No houses, no trees, no buildings, no, it doesn't. nothing, no water, nothing. The only thing that you would find in Mecca in those days was burning heat, scorching heat, burning sun, and mountains that have become black because even they can't tolerate the heat. The order of Allah came and that's enough. He took them when Hajar did not know what the plan was. When they reached the middle of the desert, which is where Mecca is today right near the Kaaba, which is built today. There was nothing there, but they settled down with a bit of water and a bit of food. Suddenly, Ibrahim salam stood up, turned his back and began to walk the other way. Hajar walked up to him and said, Ya Ibrahim, he didn't reply. Ibrahim, he didn't reply, kept walking. She knew something was wrong. She said, are you leaving us? He kept walking. Ibrahim salam did not answer. He kept looking to the ground, not even looking at her and walking straight ahead. And Hajar calls out, Oh Ibrahim, where are you going? Oh Ibrahim, where have you left us? There is nobody here, there's no food, there's no water. And Ibrahim, can you imagine every father amongst us? He hears his son crying. He hears his wife begging and pleading. He has been told by his Lord to leave them. He continues walking and Hajar understands that this tender man yet again I'm absolutely fascinated with the story of Ibrahim him as the archetype of the prophets him as the prototype of the pure monotheist yet again you don't have that in any other religion and I have to repeat this and make this very very clear for the non-muslims watching which other religion has a red threat which other religion tells you what religion even is because if you look at Christianity they claim that Christianity is the truth 
However, then they talk about Abraham, they talk about Moses, and we know that those people were not Christians. Then you see the Jews, and the Jews will talk about Abraham as well. But they know very well that Abraham was not a Jew either. So how does this work? How can we claim that Judaism or Christianity are the true religions? However, the prophets within those religions were not Christians or Jews. It is only Islam that identifies Abraham, Ibrahim, was a pure monotheist, somebody that submitted his will to God, to God alone. This is what Ibrahim did, this is what a Muslim does, and this is what Islam is. And therefore, Alhamdulillah, we are Muslim. Never do this. No other religion does it. His Lord None. has told him. And so Hajar asks him, Oh Ibrahim, has Allah told you to do this? Finally, Sayyidina Ibrahim salam responded and said, Yes. Hajar radiallahu anh has said, Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not neglect us. That's it. She didn't talk with him further. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to do this? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of us. He will not neglect us. This is the iman. This is the iman of his mother Hajar. was just following God. The mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amazing. This is her iman. He continues to walk. And when he gets to a place where she can no longer see him and Ismail can no longer see him, Sayyidina Ibrahim Islam turns to Allah. Oh Allah, I've left my only child. Oh Allah, I've left my wife in this barren land. Oh Allah, there's nothing here, nothing grows here. There's not even water in the Baytik al-Muharram right next to your sacred house. Why? So that they establish salah. Oh Allah, I beg you, fill the heart of some from amongst men with love towards them. And oh Allah, give them samara, give them fruits, so that they may be grateful. The hearts of believers are pulled over. Why? Dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ya Allah, turn the hearts of the people to them. And he left them there. Then he went back to his other wife back in Sham. And some ulama, they say he came back after 10 years. Psst. 10 no years. Phones. Text messages, <laughs> Skype, Viber, Not WhatsApp. Not even a letter. Uh, ten years, no contact. And her husband is leaving her alone. We're so spoiled nowadays. A little anecdote of my grandfather. Back then, when he was still in Yugoslavia, a man came to him and told him that there is work in Germany. He didn't even know what Germany is. He just knew it is a foreign country and they offer good money. So my grandfather asked the man, what do I need to come to Germany with you? The man answered, you just need your passport and a small fee. No worries, my grandfather said, and he ran back to his house. However, nobody was home. My grandma was at work and the children were at school. My father, my aunt, my uncle, they were all at school. My grandfather, on the other hand, he forgot his key, but he really needed his passport. So therefore, in his ambition, my grandfather looked around and he found a huge stone smashed in his own window just to get the passport out, wrote a quick letter, wife, I am gone to a foreign country, I will be back soon, and left. My grandmother, my father, they didn't hear for months of my grandfather. He went to Germany and started working over there, saving up so one day he can take his family over to Germany. During this time, my grandmother just continued business as usual, taking care of the children, going to work. Nowadays, if you pull something like that and you don't respond to your WhatsApp message after two hours or so, your wife probably will cheat on you.